After an intense investigation into the Minneapolis Police Department, the federal government is stepping in to force change. Such conduct is deeply disturbing and it erodes the community's trust in law enforcement. United States Attorney General Merrick Garland was in Minneapolis today to share findings from the Department of Justice. It says the Minneapolis Police Department uses excessive force, discriminates against black and Native American citizens, as well as those with behavioral disabilities, and violates demonstrators and journalists' rights to free speech. The investigation was ordered after the murder of George Floyd. But community members say these problems have existed for generations. Tonight, we have team coverage for you on the scathing report and the reaction from leaders and families. First, WCCO's Alan Henry is here to explain what this report means and what comes next, Alan. Yeah, the report lays out 28 recommended changes for the city and police department. Now the city and MPD will negotiate a consent decree focused on accountability and improving use of force policies. The consent decree will provide a pathway to lasting change in Minneapolis. But how easy or long that pathway is remains to be seen. They're not quick, they're not easy, and they're not overnight. And so I think we have to be committed to the work for the long haul. This is going to have to have change at all levels. Lawyer Abu Amara says that starts with policing the police policy changes within the department. So whether that be reporting uh, m misconduct among other officers, um, and then when you don't do those things, there's gonna have to be some type of accountability mechanism to make sure that actors within the department who are not following the rules are held accountable. Amara says Minneapolis hiring Chief Brian O'Hara from Newark, where he was in charge of implementing a consent decree there, was likely in anticipation of this day. We have the leadership in place to deliver on it. Doesn't mean it will. We have to hold them to account. But I think because he has the knowledge and expertise, it puts us a bit ahead of where any other city would be. Cities like Seattle, which next month will hit its 11th year under a consent decree. And a lot of people were expecting the Department of Justice to come in and, and we were expecting killings to go down. We were ex expecting culture to change. Joel we Merkel is an assistant attorney general for the state of Washington and a member of Seattle's Community Police Commission. He says collaboration will be key in the months and years ahead. You can change the policies with with respect to policing, but uh, it, it's difficult to really have a lot of meaningful change unless you have transparent accountability provisions. And they say the community will be an important part of the conversation. A lot of the policy changes and culture changes, that's not something the consent decree is going to do on its own. That's something that has to come from the community. The more the community is engaged, the more the, the community's elected leaders work with the community, um, the I think the better it's going to go. Now, in the months ahead, city leaders will work with the Department of Justice to iron out the details of that consent decree, including how it will coexist with a separate consent decree between the city and the state. An important part of that will be working with the police union through collective bargaining, making sure all parties are on board with the reforms. Aaron? Interesting, yeah, to hear the role of community in all of this. Thank you, Alan.